This time on Dr. Zoon, you'll learn to build a toothpick bridge using your own bridge design, a piece of foam board, scotch tape, wax paper, glue, and of course toothpicks. Then you'll use weights to test the strength of your bridge. Hello, Dr. Zoon here. Today we're going to be building toothpick bridges. We're going to be following the book, Building Toothpick Bridges, and doing the construction part of this activity. I think that you'll find this is a real good activity, and you'll enjoy using the toothpicks, glue, and wax paper to build your own bridge. The first step in the process is to build a template which will show us the span of the bridge and show us where the abutments of the bridge will be built. We'll make this template out of thin cardboard or poster board, this piece of cardboard should be about 15 centimeters wide and 35 centimeters long. For every good bridge, there needs to be a river flowing underneath it. And in this case, this middle portion of the cardboard will be our river. The sides of the river will be 10 centimeters from each end of the cardboard. You can draw lines, wavy lines, down through indicating the river stream. The next step is to cut a hole in the middle of the river, which is four centimeters on each side and is five centimeters from the sides of the cardboard and five centimeters from the sides of the river bank. On each side of the river, we'll draw a square five centimeters on each side for the bridge abutments to fit into. This square should be two and a half centimeters from the end of the cardboard and five centimeters in from the edge of the cardboard. We'll repeat the process on the other side of the river and draw a square for the abutments on that side, positioned in the same place. The next step in the bridge building process is to get a design for your bridge. For ideas of this, you can refer to the Building Toothpick Bridges book, and there they have some different styles of bridges that you can make. Also, while designing your bridge, you need to keep in mind the bridge building code as described in the book. You'll need to make a working drawing of your bridge design. To do this, you can sketch it, draft it, or do as I did, use a computer program to draw it. To build our bridge, we're going to use a piece of foam like this, which will allow us to have a flat surface that we can pin things to if we need to. We'll need two copies of our working drawing which will tape to the foam. Once we have the two working drawings in place, we'll place a piece of waxed paper over the working drawings and tape it in place. The wax paper will allow the glue not to stick to the working drawings as we're working. We'll begin the construction process by arranging toothpicks along this roadbed line. We'll lay the toothpicks down along the line and overlap them slightly. And we'll arrange them to see how much overlap that we're going to need for each one. We'll do this before we begin gluing so we won't be in trouble later on. So here we can see we have about a half inch overlap in each case. We'll be using HD bond adhesive as the glue which will hold our toothpick bridge together. We'll put some of the glue into a container. I'm using a film canister lid. And as you notice, this glue is very thick, which will help the sticks stick together. We'll take each stick one by one, dip it in the glue, spread it over the piece which preceded it, hold them together for just a second, and then proceed to the next one.
Once we have the top and bottom of the bridge side completed, we'll go ahead and add the diagonals which give the bridge side that truss-like appearance. To do this, we'll add a little bit of glue to the two spots where we're going to add a diagonal truss work piece. And then place the toothpick in position in the glue. We'll repeat that process, working with the same diagonal direction in each case, applying glue and then inserting the toothpick into the glue in the correct position. And there we have all the diagonals of one direction applied to the side of the bridge. We can go back at this point and add a little bit of glue to each joint to once again reinforce it and give us good strong joints. At this point, we're going to add in the vertical members of the bridge abutments. To do this, we're going to add some glue to the underneath side of this joint where this vertical member will be placed. Let's go ahead and add some glue and place this member in position and press the bridge side down into the glue joint. We'll repeat the process for the other vertical member on this side, adding glue to the bottom side of the joint, sliding our toothpick underneath the bridge side and into position like that. We'll add a little bit of glue to strengthen the joint. And we'll reposition if necessary. We'll repeat the process on the opposite end of the bridge, placing glue underneath where the joint will be and sliding a toothpick into position And for the last vertical member, we'll do the same. And we'll add glue to the joints to strengthen them. Before we can add the opposite diagonals to the side of the bridge, We'll need to let the glue dry for about 30 to 35 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and do the other side of the bridge just like we did this one. I've completed the construction of the other side of the bridge and now we're ready to turn both sides over so that we can finish up the construction. We need to be careful as we begin to lift the bridge side up We'll take one of our toothpicks and slide it underneath the bridge side between the bridge side and the wax paper to break it loose from the glue. This will ensure that we don't break our bridge side apart as we're turning it over. Once we have the side loose, we carefully pick it up and turn it over. Since our bridge sides are symmetrical, we can just place it back over the pattern and we're ready to go again. We'll repeat the process with the other side of the bridge, removing it and flipping it over, and we'll be ready to begin again. 
Now we can begin placing diagonal braces on the other sides of the bridge. And again, we'll use a toothpick to add glue to the places on the sides of the bridge where we want to put diagonal braces. If necessary, if your bridge side is moving around like mine is, you can pin it in place using a T-pin in a couple of different places. Finish adding the last diagonal brace here. And now we'll add some diagonal braces again on the abutments. We'll want to be sure that where they cross, we get those sticks glued together as well. Repeat the process for the other side. And position that toothpick. And that completes that side of the bridge. We'll do the other side of the bridge, just like we did this side, and then we'll let both of those sides dry again for 30 minutes to an hour. Both sides of the bridge are dry now, so we can remove them from the wax paper. We'll remove any pins that there are holding them down, and carefully pick them up take them off and set them off to one side. The next step is to remove the wax paper and we'll insert a drawing of our bridge surface with our river in the middle and put the wax paper back down so that we can build the bridge from this point. We'll take each side of the bridge and place it so that the toothpicks are inside of our abutment squares. And we'll very carefully press the toothpicks down into the foam. And this will hold the sides of the bridge up while we place cross members on them. If you have one that won't go through, you can take a pin and poke a hole for it, and that will help getting the two picks through. And there we have both sides. We need to make sure that these sides are plumb, that is, they're standing straight up, and that they're the same distance from the floor of our template to the roadbed. What we'll be doing now is adding cross pieces between the two sides of the bridge to add stability and a place for cars and trucks and pedestrians to go across the bridge. And we're going to place toothpicks across the bridge like this. And we'll place several of them down the length of the bridge. We'll use one toothpick to apply glue. And 
Once we've applied the glue, we'll simply insert a toothpick into position in the glue. like that. To add further stability and strength to the bridge, I'm going to add more cross-sectional members across the row bed of the bridge. And I'll repeat this process as I put members here, 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 and here. And you can see that I've added the additional cross members in these spots. Now that we've added cross members to the roadbed, we're ready to add cross members to the top of the bridge as well. We'll use the same process, adding glue, where we're going to add a cross member and placing a toothpick there. And we'll repeat the process at each joint on the top of the bridge. As you can see, we've added the cross members across the top of the bridge, and now we're ready to add the cross section members to the bridge abutments. To do this, we'll place the toothpick approximately where we're going to have it and add some glue at those points and place the toothpick in position like that. On the other side of this abutment, we'll place another toothpick in the opposite direction of our other diagonal, and we'll add glue at those two points. And place the toothpick in position, like that. We'll repeat the process for the other abutment adding a diagonal in each direction on it as well. I'm going to add two more diagonal pieces to the roadbed to help stabilize it and give it extra strength. We'll place some glue in both positions. And these diagonals, again, will help the bridge from moving side to side. Once we've completed this, we'll let the bridge dry for overnight before that we test it. We've allowed the glue for our bridge to dry overnight, so it's ready for the testing process now. For testing, we'll get our template that we made in the very beginning, and we'll place it either between tables or chairs, or your teacher will have something devised, or something like this workmate, where we have a span across, which is the river. We'll place the bridge on the template so that the toothpicks of the abutments are within the squares that we drew on the template. Of course, when we get to the testing process, we want to be sure that we have safety glasses on in case when our bridge breaks, the toothpicks go flying. We'll need a piece of string or twine like this with a loop at each end. This loop will pass over our testing rod, which can either be a dowel rod like this, or you could even use a pencil. The other loop will thread down through the bridge 
and through the hole in our template, and we'll insert the dowel rod through the open loop in the bridge and position the dowel rod in the middle of the bridge. Depending upon the design of your bridge, you may want to have the dowel rod going in the opposite direction across the bridge and through the loop like this. We'll add the hooked weights to the string at the loop at the bottom. We're adding a 100 gram mass to it and it, the bridge is holding it quite nicely. We'll need to keep track of how much we're adding as we go along so we know how much the bridge held at the very last. Let's go ahead and add another 100 gram weight. We want to do this very carefully so that the bridge doesn't break because of the force of our hands pulling down slightly on the bridge. Now it's holding 200 grams of weight. Let's add a 50 gram mass. And now we're up to 250 grams. Another 50 gram mass brings us to 300 grams. We'll add another 20 gram mass. We're now at 320 grams and our bridge is holding quite well. Another 20 gram mass. Let's take it on up to 350 grams by adding a 10 gram mass. At this point, we're going to have to take these weights off and add some bigger weights so that we can continue adding more mass. With our last amount of weight being 300 grams, 350 grams, we're going to add 400 grams to it now. This is a 200 gram weight. and another 200 gram weight would bring it to 400 grams. Let's hope it holds. Let's try another 100 grams to bring us to 500 grams. 500 grams and still holding. Add another 100 gram weight and we'll be to 600 grams. Another 50 gram weight makes 650 grams Another 50 gram weight will bring us to 700 grams. And it's time again to take these off and add some bigger weights so we can continue. We were at the 700 gram point. So now we're at 1,000 grams. We're at 1,300 grams. The excitement is building as we're at 1,600 grams. We're at the 2,000 gram mark. We're at 2,600 grams, 3,200 grams. What a bridge. We've built such a good bridge here that we've had to change our system and we put a bucket here on the end of a string which will allow us to add lots and lots of weights and not have to stop and uh, add more weights onto the string. So once we have this done and the bridge breaks, then we'll weigh how much mass this bucket is and we'll know how much it, the bridge was able to hold. Let's go ahead and begin adding weights. We'll put in a thousand grams. And with the bucket, you'll need to be sure and distribute the load along the bottom of the bucket so the bucket doesn't tip. Another hundred grams will be 3,900 grams. And now we're at 4,000 grams. We're going to continue to add mass to the bucket.
Looky there, it busted. Let's measure the mass of this bucket now and see how much our bridge held. My bridge is broken now, but I measured the mass of the bucket and the weights inside, and it turned out to be 4,200 grams. That's pretty good for a toothpick bridge. Now, your bridge may not hold that much, or it might hold more, depending upon what kind of toothpicks you use and your toothpick bridge design. Good luck in building your toothpick bridge, and remember, I'll see you real soon.